you were to put yourself in a room of five other girls, mm-hmm. what makes you stand out from five other girls? I'm not competing. Other than- I, I, I don't even try competing. I think that every single one of those women have something special about themselves. Agreed. Want to be with somebody or are you okay with being alone? I've, I would definitely love to be in a healthy relationship with someone. Yeah. Perfect. So let's say you find Mr. Dream Guy mm-hmm. and he's 10 out of 10 things you want. Mm-hmm. There's 10 other girls like you or five mm-hmm. other girls like you in a room. Mm-hmm. What about you would make that guy say, no, I have to choose her? On Saturday mornings, can you not make pancakes? Like, can you not make a big breakfast? Like, Milo can have toast. You're not going to cut the grass. First, I want to just have coffee. So sit down on paper. It might look good. Like, oh, he's cleaning and making breakfast. Like, so nice. I would be, like, excited for him to get home. Then he would get home, and he would be like, hey, like, say hello, give us a kiss. And then he would go and start doing the dishes. I was like... Why am I feeling rage because he's going to do the dishes? This is how this dude's week is going so far. Comes home from a long day of work, goes to do some dishes. Can you not? Wakes up on his day off, goes to make some pancakes. Can you not? This is the definition of can a guy do anything right? I mean, this is exactly why guys stop trying because they enter these damned if they do, damned if they don't situations. I mean, it's like, don't rely on me for a list, take initiative, and then wait, 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 don't do anything without running it by me first. And if you see the stitches to this video, everyone's talking about the guys can't do anything right aspect of this, but I actually wanted to woman-splain a little bit on the real issue going on here. The whole root of this issue is that she wants his attention. This isn't about pancakes. This isn't about mowing the lawn. This is a continuous buildup of resentment for what she perceives as a lack of intimacy on his part. And a lot of that is normal, but she's saying that she's literally feeling a rage. And deep down, that's because she's mad that he is not initiating intimacy on his own. And we have to examine that. I think one of the main issues we women are experiencing is that we're relying way too much on the men to be the initiators of the intimacy. And a lot of women don't realize this, but once men become the sole initiators, it starts to feel creepy and they start to really hold back unless they see a really warm sign or bright beacon. Ladies, we can get after it too. We are entirely allowed to be the initiators. But for some reason, probably due to being sociologically conditioned into believing that we can't be the chasers or the pursuers, we refuse to rev that engine. So instead, when we want intimacy, we end up using the only language we were sociologically conditioned to using, which is task delegation. Next thing you know, we're very unintentionally turning affection into a task by saying things like, can you not make pancakes? Ultimately, she was upset that when he came home, he did not join her in the space that she was in. So go join him in the space that he's in. If he goes into the kitchen to do dishes, just go in there and have coffee and chat with him while he's doing it. He would love that. Just like men are currently socially reconditioning themselves to be more present in parenthood or more emotionally vulnerable, we have to start socially conditioning ourselves to pursue a little bit more and to initiate a little bit more. Oh, and everyone's saying he can't mow the lawn because then she'll have to watch the child. Here's my husband with both his son and our daughter mowing the lawn just fine. Life hack. Men love when you simply exist around them. They're very simple creatures, and they love even more when you make the moves. Initiating intimacy is not some sign of desperation on your part or some sign of failure on his part. It's actually just one of the coolest things ever. In conclusion, ladies, make some moves on your man today. You're welcome. Man, it is beautiful out today. Fuck, I wish I was happy. Never cheated. Yes. Why? What happened? Cause nothing happened. I just got bored. Okay, okay. How about you? Yes. What happened? I get I lose interest too quick. Uh-huh. Yeah, so I visited University of Florida while I was dating someone at home and I cheated on my boyfriend. They made money. They car. They house. Their energy. Yeah. Their motivation. Waste their time. Their faith. Waste their time. By the time we're done, they wanna kill themselves. <laughs> have you ever cheated? For sure. I have, yes. <laughs> Absolutely. I have. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I have. Listen. You did not Please start no car battery with your bare me. hands. If I didn't, may God murder my children. I don't even, I hate that I even spoke about that. If I didn't, may God murder my children. No, don't say that. Please, yeah. kill them today. Right now, today. And, and to be honest with you, I just put my hands over the battery and prayed, Lord, please let this woman battery start. On a physics level, that's impossible. 
on a physics level, human beings emit electricity. Our bodies are electric. Not enough to start. You a ever touch somebody and shocked them? Yes, I've gotten okay. static so shock. So what, what you was doing? You was emitting yes electricity. But five things that all women say about their ex, the last man that they dealt with, or when they speaking about men in general. I'm gonna translate what each one of them means. Number one, he was a narcissist or narcissistic. Translation: He was a man that was confident. He was a man that believed in himself, and he was a man that put himself first. He didn't put me on a pedestal. He didn't treat me like a queen, and he didn't worship the ground that I walked on. So I'm going to downplay his confidence and his accomplishments by saying he's a narcissist or narcissistic. Number two, he was insecure. Translation, I wanted to do as much whole activity as possible and still be in a relationship. I wanted to have a lot of male friends. I wanted to show my ass on IG. I wanted to be in the club twerking. I wanted to take as many girls trips as possible. I want to still be in communication with my ex. I want to still flirt with men on IG. But because you won't allow me to do that, you're insecure and you're not a real man. Number three, he was controlling, AKA or translation. I wanted to go to the club. He wouldn't allow me. I wanted to have male best friends. He didn't allow me. I wanted to have conversations with my ex. He didn't allow me. I wanted to be twerking in a club. He didn't allow me. I wanted to smoke weed. He didn't allow me. I want to blow through money. He didn't allow me. That's what she means when she say her last man was controlling. Before, he was a manipulator. Translation, he wanted to do everything in his power to make sure we had a long-term successful relationship. He told me to get in the gym. He told me to stop spending money stupidly. He told me to get my car fixed. He told me to start reading books. He told me to stay out the clubs. He told me to stay off of IG. He told me to stay off TikTok. But because I'm not looking for growth, development, and becoming a better woman and trying to change my situation as a woman, he was a manipulator because he's trying to make me a better woman. Number five, the most common one that we hear every fucking day, he was toxic. Translation, I did everything in my power to be annoying. I was being petty 24-7. I started arguments 24-7. I was poking the bear 24-7. And the moment he responded to my toxicity as a woman, he was toxic. So more of the story is, if you hear any of these five phrases from a woman, just know that she's programmed to say all of that shit. It's a few more that they say, who hurt you, gay, misogynistic, small dick energy, sassy, any of those demeaning terms, don't pay none of those terms. Uh, don't pay any of those terms attention because what a woman is trying to do is just trying to get under your skin and put herself in a victim role to make herself look good. So anytime you hear a woman speaking about men, she's going to say those terms, narcissistic, insecure, controlling, manipulator, and toxic.